Major League Journeyman, we have a show for you today. Man, soccer at an all-time high, is it not? We got more games than we know what to do with, but they're also quality games. We got the Euro Cup final. We had uh, Copa America final. We had Lufus Athletic wins the national championship final. We got a lot of stuff happening, and the All-Star game is on deck We're covering it all. We're chopping up the U.S. men's national team. We're talking about coaching candidates, where the players might be ending up in this window because a lot of clubs got a lot of money to spend. It's a fun summer. Jump in. Recording live from Sea Isle City, New Jersey. This is the New Heights Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kelsey. I'm here with my good friend and brother, Travis Kelsey, and his girlfriend, Taylor Swift, we're happy to have you. <laughs> we got to edit that out. We're going to get a lawsuit trademark. No way. No Just way. kidding. Bring All it. jokes. This is Major League Journeyman. <laughs> and my boys, Dax McCarty and Alan Gordon. I am on vacation, but I am thrilled to be here to chop up soccer with you two fine young gentlemen. Did you lose a lot's your, happened. Lose your sleeves at the beach or what? I lo- I did not bring my sleeves to the beach. I already told you these did are the going to be on display. Did the fish behind week. you eat them? The, the fish ate my sleeves, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I used them as a, a whole address for my daughters. I have two daughters, so I used one sleeve for each. Um, this is this is, uh, this is is a fun time in soccer right now. It it has remember, – remember when these, this used to be – the doldrums of the season because it was the middle of the summer and there was nothing going on and it was super hot and the games were boring. And now we have 8,000 soccer games on every single day and they're exciting games. These are not throwaway games. Man, I stayed up until whatever time it was watching the Copa America final after the 162 minute delay because people were climbing through the air ducts to get into Hard Rock Stadium. That was insane. I felt like I was watching a movie. I could not really believe what was going on. And then you turn the game on and you finally see the passion that is South American soccer. Man, it is fun to watch these guys. They are so technically gifted. They're so insanely over-the-top passionate about winning and losing I thought you were about to say insanely theatrical. You got to insanely. Well, that goes along. That that is a that's a better way of saying what I was saying, or at least a more critical way of saying. Um, But man, it's a different game. These guys they they play a different game, and when when you are able, when we are able to watch some of the best in the world and go at each other, it is it it's a joy. It's a joy to see. Um, So to have. Argentina, Colombia. Colombia was a lot of fun, man. They took it to Argentina. And then, you know, and then the champs, they show their chops. They hang in. They weather the storm. Then they go at them a little bit. They lose their talisman, their number 10. Uh, but you know what? You have Latoro, the bull, who comes in and <laughs> what Maybe a luxurious in the tournament. Super sub. What a luxurious option to come off the bench. You know, it 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 kind of is crazy. Um Dax, I want to start with you. <clears throat> Do you feel like what we witnessed, and we have to, I think this is, you know, the, the natural first segment here. It, did we just witness something significant with Leo Messi and the injury that we saw in the second half? I think we did, yes. But uh, uh, first, can we just hit on the Andy Dufresne, Shawshank Redemption recreation of Colombian fans crawling through the air vents, getting into hard. Dude, rock. it was in. That was wild. What I, like what a joke! What a joke! <clears throat> and I think like we talked about this a little bit off air, um, but all all jokes aside, because it was a cl- very serious situation. I don't know if you dinosaurs are on Twitter much these days. Um, no, but Stu no. Holden. Uh, there actually, if you didn't know this, um, Twitter doesn't exist anymore. It's now it called does. X. It does. No, nope, I don't know what that is. Yeah. it's Twitter. So um, anyways, anyway. I, Continue Stu, on. Stu Holden, uh, he called the game, obviously. And right. his was he his, in the aqueduct? Was he in the air duct with him reporting been. live? He really? his wife came out with a thread on Twitter talking about how her and her daughter were caught in the crunch, in the chaos of mm-hmm. 
whatever it was that was happening pregame and how scary it was. And to see some of the images and the videos come out of the mayhem that was ensuing and, and how dangerous. Serious question. Serious question. Have either of you been in a crowd like that where Never. you have no control over your body? Never. And no, it's, have not you? Just, it's not just that, how chaotic it was. It was how hot it was, too. Okay, so the, the chaos is crazy. Meetings. Let me I mean, let me just New add Year's, a little context. New Year's um, Eve in Vegas once, but... Yeah. New Year's Eve, where you lost control I mean, of your body? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> That was the, that was the booze. No, you him. were you were actually in a room with ten chairs and no other people. But you know that's where you, <laughs> it felt like that. <laughs> it must have felt crazy, Gordo. I was so I was at Coachella one year, and there was there was a crowd where it just kept getting fuller and more full and more full and more full to the point then when you couldn't you I was out of control of my movement of my body I was forward I was backward and it was literally just the sway of music of bodies of this packed packed crowd and Danger. it was dude it was one of the one of the like most memorable moments where I was genuinely nervous like I was scared I was like oh sh shit something I, I don't if I can't move I, so, there's if something all, happens here all, you're in trouble listen. and I saw all those things with Fences breaking and people like yeah. you're talking about stampedes on top of here's, one another. Here's the, here's the difference. Cause you know, if we want to talk about situations we put ourselves in as young adults when we're kidless, then yes, you know, I've been known in my Chicago days to hit up Lollapalooza, put myself okay. in the middle of a crowd every now and then, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Having some fun. The you seem like a big that, rave guy to me. Dad, I, so I, can get behind that. When I was younger and cool. The difference is that, you intentionally put yourself in that situation and you know what to, what to expect. You know, it's going to be a little crazy and you do not have children with you. For me, the scariest part was seeing videos come out of, of mothers like looking for kids and, and kids scared and sitting down and not knowing where people were and people to being toppled on top of each other. Police slamming people on the ground who maybe they had, maybe they didn't have tickets Maybe they were not following directions. Whatever it was, it seemed like a like a scene out of uh, I don't know, like you guys said, a movie, right? Like just something that you couldn't comprehend, and something that you know I don't associate that type of situation with happening in the United States. It feels. Let like, me be completely ignorant here. It seemed like a scene out of South America well, because I feel like those fans and passionate and the stadium and the way that the way that it evolves, especially with two fan bases that are more more insane about those teams than they right. are in a lot of ways about religion it is it seemed very emblematic of what you would see in south america if those Man, there's, teams a, were there's a fine line between passion and idiocy okay and shame on those fans who went to the stadium without tickets knowing full well what they were intending to do right because they took a very already already difficult situation for security and made it, it exponentially worse okay guys, Game on guys this happened this happened last euro with england it did happen at the euros it, it, did. it happened in the euros dude so i mean this is this is was that the wasn't that the champions league final that was champions no, league was final, euros, liverpool, euro, wasn't euro it? final it was the euro final euro final and and didn't and the same thing happen with liverpool i mean it's ha it's happening all over the place so it has nothing to yeah. do with south american fans although listen I'm the same as you and the stereotype, you know, is yes, that's what they do. That's why they have 30 foot fences on their, you know, every yeah. field in Brazil. With barbed wire. I mean, barbed they've been through it. They're, they've yes, addressed they've been this. Through it. They've know, they know how to do it, but this is, this is clearly in, in my opinion. Yes. Fan, fans, they're in the wrong. They're the ones doing it, but of course, you know, you, you, you can't control them. What you can control is how you regulate these things. You have to know and prepare that yeah. these things are going to happen, especially Colombia versus Argentina, which these mm -hmm. two are, have been powerhouses in mm -hmm. South America and they're fighting for supremacy. Yep. Obviously, you know, Argentina's on a run of, of a lifetime for any, for, for any and every, national team they won the they the back-to-back -back, uh copa winners with the world cup in between it is the greatest run arguably in a national team's history by any team and and colombia on the other side two and a half years since they lost the game right yeah. and so you know this this we, we talked about this convoy 
who's trying to pass the buck. And the first thing that I thought about was I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed to be an American because we were so naive um, about not knowing how passionate these guys were going to be. And it's not just putting it on them. That was my, that's why I referenced the Euros. It could have been, you know, England was doing it last time. There's guys mm-hmm. doing blow in the stand. I mean, it was a, it was, there's a, there's a documentary about it, which is crazy, right? Like these guys were out of their minds. It's every nation and every soccer fan. These are the most passionate people. That's why we love this game. So mm-hmm. why, why was it so easy? Why for are them we surprised? Trample down? Why are we yeah. surprised? The organizers of this event have to take responsibility because it was unprepared and yes. Unprepared. And it well, could have hold on, into hold a, on. It could have well, turned I into think, a disaster. Coma ball, I agree. I agree to, because there's been plenty of criticism around everything. But this one in particular, in terms of security outside the stadium and stadiums being prepared to deal with 75 or 100,000 people, like – no, no offense here, guys, but Hard Rock Stadium is the home of the Dolphins, and they have go through this plenty of times before. So the fact that they weren't prepared and weren't ready, I, I don't I for all that common ball should be taking ownership of with the fields and, and the, uh, everything, the organization of the tournament. I don't know if this one's on them. What? It is on them. hundred percent. Why? What? Why? Why? Because they are organized. Because they're, the in, they're in charge. Yeah, but you, you hire out the venue to handle this stuff. Listen, we don't know the ins and outs of it, but I can guarantee you that we will in the very near future because there will be lawsuits. And if yeah. I'm a fan, if I'm a fan who who had a, who had paid for a ticket, however X amount of money they spent, thousands of dollars probably, and I didn't get in because they weren't letting people in that had legitimate tickets because they just started letting people in without right. checking them. Yep, I'm, I'm filing class action lawsuit, baby. And there's going to be a very high priced attorney down there in Miami who is going to put something together and there will be repercussions for this. So when both those groups will both groups will have to pay for sure. 100 yeah. percent. I'm just saying for we'll, sure. We'll find out. We'll find out more as as more details trickle out. But I'm just saying it's not a good look. It's not a good look that we're hosting a World Cup in two years. It's going to be the biggest World Cup of all time, clearly between three countries. And it's going to be there's going to be the most eyeballs ever on a sporting event in two years. Yeah. And the run up to that World Cup is now marred by conversation of can we do it and are we capable of doing it? Are we a soccer footballing nation? Like it, it's nonsense. We've hosted two or three World Cups already, so yeah. there shouldn't be any questions about our capacity to host. But that's what it is, right? That's so, all you see all over is people. Here talk- we go. I, I'm going to throw I'm going to throw a hot take here. I, I actually love it. I love every every question that we're getting right now because this isn't the World Cup and this doesn't matter. This is a dry run for everything that we do as a U.S. Uh, a soccer playing nation on the field, coaching staff, organization structure of the U.S. men's national team, the stadiums, can they handle it? Like all of these things. Yes, we obviously would have preferred for Copa America to look a lot better. But the end goal is 2026 in the World Cup. So for us to be getting all these questions now and having all this negative feedback, there's well, almost only yeah. one direction. I think direction it's, it's to only negative feedback at this point. Yeah. Did you yeah. see Did you see Bielsa's press conference and even Jesse? Yeah, he like murdered think, everybody. And and right and I think rightfully so because look, for I want to sure. give, give you my overview of Copa. I'll try to be quick about it, and then I'll talk about the final. But my overview of Copa America. We'll, is that, we'll see if we let you talk about the it, final, but give us your overview. It, it, yeah. it wasn't yeah. it, it wasn't pleasant to watch, in from an aesthetic uh, aesthetically pleasing perspective. Like like you said, Dan, it was it, it was war, and it was teams that traditionally don't like each other. And this mm-hmm. is how this is how it is when you get these continental competitions together, and specifically in South America, it's a battle every single time. Yeah. And these these guys, these these footballers, these soccer players that all play in the, at the highest level and have more talent in their pinky toe than any of us do, it's almost like so- the soccer doesn't matter. It's about who can roll around on the ground the most. Can you get an opponent sent off? Can you be so th- theatrical to get the referees on your side? Are you going to get the whistle? Can you mm-hmm. make a set-piece goal? For as fun as Colombia was to watch, Hamas Rodriguez was the best player in the tournament because he delivered the best set-pieces. And that's a mm-hmm. fact, right? And he was still good mm-hmm. in the run of play. But for me, I, I found myself, we talked about this at, you know, at, at breakfast in, in the Atlanta United, you know, kitchen. And, I, you know, one of my teammates is like, Dax, you have to understand this is cultural. 
it right. doesn't matter that all these are world-class players. When you step mm-hmm. on the field and you represent your country in South America, it's war. And yep. if you're not prepared to go win the war, you're it not looked like it. It and that's like what it, it looks like. And, and there's something to be said about how... Dude, I want the U.S. men's national are. team to play every friendly from here on out until the World Cup in sure. South America. But yeah. my overall point is Toughen that... Toughen these dudes up. Okay, fine. But going back to the U.S. men's national team and going back to Greg specifically, this this is n- at the highest level of soccer, in international football. And like we can talk about the Euros a little bit later because what Spain... Euros is, suck Spain to watch is. too. Euros suck to watch too. <laughs> but not Spain. It's Spain two good to watch. Things. It's All I'm saying is, beautiful soccer, it goes out the window when you're with your national team. I, I'm I'm convinced. Spain was able to do it, and, and Germany, to a certain extent, was fun to watch. But when you are watching these continental competitions, it's not good soccer. It's just no. not. It's war, no, it's not. and that's what it is. And so I enjoyed some of the games. I enjoyed Colombia-Uruguay. I thought that was an unbelievable game in Charlotte. That was a fun one to watch. The fields, the fields weren't good enough, right? Some of the things that you hear about from like an infrastructure perspective, like Bolivian team not having a training field, right? Like some of these situations with travel, whatever, like there needs to be some accountability and it needs to get better before the 2026 World Cup. Mm-hmm. I agreed 100%. Yeah, Gordo, since Dax didn't want to answer my question about Messi, would you like to take a stab Jeez, that at, was like at, 30 at minutes this? ago? <laughs> like 30 minutes ago. Where, where, where did we go? It's like we went around the moon. Dan, and does, he, around Dan the doesn't moon. police it. He doesn't do a good Dax, job. Dax didn't, didn't that's share, that's Dax true, didn't that's share that's his true. agenda <laughs> with me earlier. I hijacked, I hijacked, I hijacked the conversation. I hijacked is, the conversation. Yes, Deal you with did. It. We had a power struggle here, folks. We got a real host <laughs> power struggle. You're witnessing a war between da- the country of Dax and Gargs. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I deal with here, people. Um, so, so the messy thing. Messy. Yeah, I mean, I, on the field. I don't. I literally do not remember what Dax said and what his take was. I think Dax thinks he's done permanently. Um, Dax I didn't answer Dax, the question wrong. yet. Wrong. I will give okay, you my so take. Like, are you going to answer wrong. the question? Are you going to answer the question? Do you want me no. to? You want me to go before? No, you? we want you no, to no, answer no, the question, done, Gordo. Um, Jesus. Here's here's what I here's what I think. I think um, I think he's going to play in the World Cup. Um, however. I think it was kind of beautiful, man, to watch him. And I like watching him cry more than Ronaldo. Ronaldo just is such a bitch to me. But, you know. Dude, he had it, those tears a, injected behind his eyes before he the game. He He's a robot. Um, <laughs> no, but in all honesty, you can see how, like, it, you guys you guys know this. And Dax doesn't fully understand this yet. It's coming very soon. But when. Thank you. When, when in every time, every time that you, you think know it's going to be your last game. And maybe you didn't even have this guards because you thought you were going to, you know, play long. I didn't. Um, Did not. But I had, you know, you, you know, a lot of guys that know they're going to retire. It's it's just you flash back on all the hard work, all the memories, all the, all the years and everything. And there's nobody that has a longer flashback than this guy just had um, sitting on the bench. So I think he there's no guarantee he's going to play in the World Cup. And so he is taking this moment as it might be his last. And I think that is a very, very real thing. It's just this may or may not be my last. And if it is my last, you know, this is not the way that I wanted it to go out. And it all became very heavy on him because nobody's wore a heavier monkey than this guy, you know, it maybe ever you know, on what the, with the expectations of being the best player ever. And, you know, and basically carrying a nation on his back for the last 20 years, you know, and there was a lot of failures there and it's ended beautifully. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it all just came rushing in. So to answer your question, I think he will play again. I, I just think he's too good. Um, and what, what capacity, what role, I'm not sure, but um, you know, he, I think he was just taking it as either. This is my last Copa, hundred percent my last Copa and I've been in this tournament five different times or this may be the end. Um, and I just don't know. So I think it was a little bit of both, but I think we'll see him again. I think it was a beautiful scene, like you said, and sad because my feeling is that in that moment when Messi went down and you saw his ankle, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It it was crazy. And that to me is a little bit unlucky, but as a as a fellow 37 year old who 
start you start to recognize your mortality in this game and and how mm -hmm. the end you're 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 closer to the end than you are to the beginning i think messi is starting to realize that his argentina career specifically is going to come to an end sooner rather than later and even even his contract with miami is up after next year i i just look at the little injuries that he's had and he's had a bunch of little injuries the last let's call it year and a half little muscular injuries, uh, little things that that pop up where he misses three games here, he misses five games there. The emotion that I think I saw in Messi was firsthand because he couldn't finish the game, but also secondly because I think he realizes that this may be it for him in terms of a big international tournament with Argentina. 2026 for a 37-year-old still feels eons away. For sure. Eons away. Yeah. And Messi, the way that he plays, if you look at the way that he played in this Copa America, obviously you won't find a bigger fan of Messi than me. But if you mm -hmm. look at how he played, he was not great. Kevin Egan might be a bigger fan of Messi he, than he, you. But let's okay. But topic. if you guys watched Argentina play, Messi wasn't very effective. He scored a goal that was a very un Messi like goal. It was like a chippy, uh, scrappy, Gordo like finish where he mm -hmm. stole someone else's shot and just kind of tapped it in. Wando. That's a Wando finish. Fine. I wish I had <laughs> more. Gordo. I wish I had more of those, bro. And, and other other <laughs> than I tried to I tried my best to watch every Argentina game. I think I missed one, but uh, other than the first game against Canada, he was not effective. And and this is, I think, partly obviously because of his age, but also because of the intensity of international soccer and the intensity of the games in Copa America, he was not ready because guess what? An MLS game won't prepare you for Copa America. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me he's going to be in MLS for another year and a half and still be able to make it all the way till the summer of 2026 and physically hold up in that environment of international soccer, the cauldron. I, I just don't see it. So to Gordo's point, what role he will play, if any, it should be as a super sub. Like, so wait, you you're saying that you don't think? Are you saying that you don't think Messi's going to play in 2026 World Cup? It's so, it's so, it's so. Uh, listen, I am on the fence because it's so me. hard to say that. Because it's a maybe. He's, <laughs> yeah, in, he's, maybe. he's in the he's in the U.S. already. He has his family here settled, and the World Cup is going to be on U.S. soil. If Messi uh -huh. said, "I want to play in the 2026 World Cup," even if I'm he's on playing. one leg, Argentina will make that happen for him. Okay, for sure. They will, right. and they should, and they write. Okay, I'm not answering the question. <laughs> I, I, I think that he will be available for Argentina in the 2020. Available for selection, even though I don't think he should. <laughs> I don't think he should. I think he should go out on top. I think he should go out on top. That's what I'm telling. Go you. out on top. Okay, I, I, I think like he that should take. go out because, like Gordo said, yeah. he lost his first four, four or five finals with Argentina. I don't know how how many games. how many uh, won the how last many three. World Cups has Messi played in five. five? Four, five World Cups. Five. So this would be six. I'm not sure. I don't let's know. Let's go. Let's, let's say. Let's six. say that. Um, I I don't think that there's a doubt in my mind. There's not a doubt in my mind that Messi is going to be on the Argentina roster to play in the World Cup in the United States of America. Oh, you're foolish. So that's no fair. chance. No there's doubt. not. It is a 100 percent chance that he will be on that roster if he's oh, going to be wrong. if he. Wrong, dude. I'm a 39 year old Messi with injury concerns is still a 25 minute sub for me in every single game, regardless. And I don't care what happens from now until then. He yeah, can actually can, only can have ego, one can his, can his ego accept the super sub role? Yes, dude. Well, we based know on, we know Ronaldo's ego can. But <laughs> or, based or, on what or, I saw from how um, how in love he is with Argentina soccer. There's no way that he would let his troops go into battle without him being there in some capacity in in the country that he now calls home. He's also, let's be honest, guys, he's also got 14, what, like 13, 14 goals for MLS this year in 2024 in half a season. Like, yeah, it sucks when you start to get older and you start to um, become immortal and have like nagging injuries. Gordo had that his rookie year all the way through and still had a 15 and a half year career. So for for Messi to have to be something less than Superman on you know random Tuesdays, I I feel for him, but I don't see him missing a World Cup. I, there's not there's absolutely one. I don't no think way. it's I think you guys are not foolish to think it's a hundred percent. It's not no chance. Okay, I'll bet I, you. Yeah, I think I think it's a hundred percent. 
and especially dude exactly. because they're they're defending champs champs they just won copa they got a squad bro yeah like if they if he if he thought that they weren't going to be competitive i could see him going out on top they could win another one they could like win they, another they, one they could win another one like it's there it's right Maybe. there they they it's, may go undefeated right through the next world cup it's right there like, that's a possibility not? why would he not I, there's we'll, well that's tough when you got to take that one on the chin, Dax. But I appreciate your vulnerability and giving we'll us see that you in 2026. Tape. We'll circle back to this. I'll tell you guys. <laughs> Lie in the sand. Oh my goodness! All right. Well, one other thing that came out of Championship Sunday was a Euro Cup final where Spain just brought it home to Spain, didn't they? <laughs> Dill did not go back to England. Oh. And Gareth Southgate walks out of the English national team. Gordo, I need, on a scale of 1 to 10, if Gareth Southgate became the the next U.S. men's national team manager, 10 being overly excited, you're going to fly yourself to the airport with a sign, 1 being you may try and find him to heckle him from any, the next stadium that he appears in. Where are you at if that was to happen? If he comes to the U.S.? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I want to say two, but I'll go two. with I, I want I'll go with. A okay, five, so it's a two. Which, okay, so it's a two. <laughs> which is complete, complete indifference. And I think it's actually no, dude, I'm not going with a five. I'm not going on the fence. I'm going with. Thank a you. Two. I'm going a with two. a two. Congratulations. Right. I'm I'm not I'm not excited about it. I hope they don't do it. This is Why a not? guy. Why not? This is a guy that this is a guy that Greg Berhalter based his whole philosophy around. They they were they are on record of talking multiple times, becoming friends, study, you know, sharing ideas with each other. They're very much the same person. I mean, Greg wants to to be like Southgate, you know? Mm. It's like he, he was so so we're Southgate we're getting this bear halter bear halter is Southgate. yes right <laughs> so like <laughs> exactly so it's like these guys are the same they're Einhorn the same is Finkel guy. Finkel and Einhorn <laughs> yes they're the same guy and if unless you had your and unless you had your head buried in the sand the last six years of his English tenure. They're not. They weren't happy with him. And are English fans ever going to be happy? No. But they got they got so much talent. I, I guess. I mean, he did well with them. Got got him to two finals or whatever. But okay. Well, that's the question, isn't it? Yeah, what but you, they have so much consider, more talent than we do. Okay. They have so much more talent than we do. And I don't like the way they play. They're not. Hey, England has the same problems as we have because Einhorn is Finkel and Finkel <laughs> is Einhorn. Okay, they can't score goals. They're not dangerous. They have the same problems as us. And we're going to go get this guy to like save us and get us to score more goals. That's stupid yeah. like let's not do that i don't Dax, know what do you I... got one to ten scale of one to ten five hey five. he's a fence guy no it's it he's wouldn't excite you just have an opinion guy. please what do you want from me it wouldn't excite me but at the end of the day i look at his results with england whatever a t super talented england team yeah boring <laughs> as hell but guess what? The guy the guy gets teams to, to, to later rounds in tournaments. Is that not what we want? Do we want to develop young players and have them play at big clubs in Europe like we already do? Or do we want to try to be competitive and win international competitions? Because um, it wouldn't excite me. The, the hire wouldn't excite me. But do I think he would, based on his track record, have more success than Greg in, in tournaments? Yeah. I don't, point, hear, I don't okay. care how it looks. Let me answer that. Let me answer I don't that. Care how it looks. Guards, guards. At this point, I don't can care we, how it looks. Guards, okay. can we call can we call Dax Danielson? Because he's painting <laughs> the fence every not really. Time. Not really. I'll answer hey, it's, Doc, it's, Dax, it's, I'll answer your question. I, you, uh, you can you can have a manager be hired and my excitement level be very average. It's I'm not okay. I wouldn't hate it. He would be better than a bunch of other candidates being thrown out there. But is he yeah. Pep? No. Okay. Is he Jose Mourinho? No. Is he is he Jurgen Klopp? No. So what's realistic? I ask what is realistic for us to achieve, and what kind of coach is realistic for us to go get? As would I prefer Wilfred Nancy? One hundred percent. Does he have the track record that Gareth Southgate does in international competition? No. So Southgate won't excite me. But do we want to try to get results in international tournaments or not? Like. 
This guy's been, he's done it. I don't care what anyone says. He's made a fi- he's made a couple finals. He's made a semifinal. Like, and say what you want about talent. Okay, well, the U.S. played claim, claim England to have talent. Claim we oh, claim sure we right. claim to have talent exactly. Right, right. My point is right. this: Do we want to prove an international manager or, or not? Do we want to go and take a risk on someone like Nancy? I mean, what, like, like what what has Southgate won? That's the point. He hasn't won anything. Is, well, so like. Okay, so who can we get? Okay, so who's another candidate we can get that's won an international competition? Please enlighten me. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't have. I don't okay. have that. Um, I, that's not the question, though. Like, I just wanted to know how you felt about Southgate potentially yeah. being our next manager. I think he gives you a better chance to win than other candidates out there. Okay, doesn't right. excite me. I'm not excited about it. But do we want to win or not? And like, yeah, yeah he doesn't he your, won, your question? But... I think your question is interesting, though. Are, what is our? What do we want? Do we want to develop players and put them in Europe, or do we want to win games uh, and, and that's advance the question? And, I'm and sick win trophies. of watching our national team say <laughs> that here, we're going to change the way we think about soccer, and we don't play well, and we don't win. So which one I have you- I have that I have my answer. I don't think it's the national team's responsibility to develop players. It's the club's responsibilities to develop players and move them to Europe. I don't okay, think that's so the US national- no, I, so Yeah, I want to win. So that's it. That's it. That's it. I don't care. I don't I if at Gucci so Anye, like Matt matter? Crocker, uh Cindy Parlo Cone, everybody that is in there, their responsibility is to win. That's so it. So do you think that this hire is gonna make us win? I think it has to. And I also think that it has to be a two year. It's a two year no, hire. For That's Southgate. It. For Southgate. Oh, for Southgate. For Southgate. Um, no, I I'm I'm on the same same uh same place as you, Gordo. I, I don't I would not want that hire. And I okay. that's probably I mean, more- Okay, hold on. Let's let's rephrase it. So hold on, let me rephrase it. Okay. Southgate was five minutes away from extra time and winning the Euros against uh-huh what I consider the best team in the world in Spain, maybe the second best team in the world other than Argentina. Let's, for the sake of conversation, say that uh, Spain doesn't score in the last five minutes. England goes on to win the Euros on penalties against Spain. Okay. What's your opinion? No. Still don't want him. Don't want him. But but you ask me, has he won anything at the international level? And then I can say, yes, he just won the Euros with England. Well, yeah, but um, if listen, if my uncle had tits, he'd be my aunt. We're talking, right? of course, <laughs> we're talking hypotheticals here. But my point is this: he's five minutes away from winning the Euros against, in my opinion, one of the best teams. He doesn't. Fair enough. Yep. But he's had a track record of all these international competitions, at least getting to the opportunity to potentially win something, and he hasn't done it. Fair enough. Fine, I'm not arguing that. Yeah. What do we want to do? Do we want to give ourselves the best chance to win a tournament? Or do we want to just take a risk on a coach who has sure. been anything? For That's sure. Where I, That's where I'm at. I, I, here's, here's, my, here's my rebuttal to that, Dax. I, I agree with what you're saying. We want to win tournaments. I don't want Southgate for a couple reasons. One, because of the stigma. I don't stigma. want him either. I'm just telling I, you my opinion. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying. Because of the stigma that would come from the U.S. hiring Southgate, number one. And number two, He'd be dealing with a completely different player that I don't know if that would be the best follow up to his current managerial position and experience. Now going to essentially the U.S. player and what that profile looks like. I, I just don't. It doesn't. Fe- it just doesn't feel right. Are you so saying this is probably the players he's been working with have infinitely more quality, or you're saying he doesn't work with like young players, or what do you mean? By I'm that? I'm saying no. He works with young players. I, I think right. they have so what, infinite, what, what infinitely more more quality. Okay. I think they have infinitely more quality. They have more experience in international the, the same competitions. England team, the same England team that the U.S. actually should have beat in the World Cup. You're saying that? Yes. Yes, I am. And yeah, you're saying those? Okay. Southgate was the coach, maybe. <laughs> let's talk about the players real quick because i do want to touch on u.s men's national team players because there's a ton of smoke around all of these guys right the, this whole operation and, and everything seems to be just blowing up in a million different directions there's a report that is on the cover of major league soccer.com mls soccer soccer.com <clears throat> that says geo reina to atlanta united oh Yes. Call, call, call me the ambulance. I'm about to <laughs> yes. Gordo, Gordo, scale of one to ten, same scale. Where would you be if Gio Reyna landed in Atlanta with the number ten jersey on the back? 
Is am I talking about for U.S. Soccer, Gio Reyna? Himself? I'm talking about for, you, for Alan want, Gordon. Where what what would your reaction be? I mean, I think that would be a one, a, a one, a want, one, a one, one out of ten, a one, a one, a one. okay, a one, a one out of ten, okay. Why one out of ten? Why? Because that, that's arguably all I've heard from you and your your co-host here. Um, that he is the best. He's he's our best prospect. U.S. U.S. Men's National Prospect besides Chris, Christian Pulisic. We need him. We need him to be playing at a high level. Mm-hmm. No offense to Dax here, but Atlanta is not a high level team right now. And so, and the Emma and the MLS is not going to. I don't think going to give him what he needs to be to to further further develop, you know, what we want and need him to be as a U.S. squad. We need him to be playing minutes, which that that would take care of that. But we need him to be playing minutes in Europe, European competitions. Dude, Garth Lagerwey just came out and said that they have 50 plus million to spend in this window. I still don't think it's a good even if even if he was going to Columbus or 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 Miami, I still don't think it's a good move for him for his career. I don't. I think promotionally or, or marketing wise, I think it's good for US to have these guys back on home soil, but I don't think it's going to be the best for him or his career or our team as the as US. So I, I don't love the I don't love the the move whatsoever. Um, so I don't think it's good for anyone. I don't think it's Dax. I don't think it's beneficial. Selfish perspective, my own personal perspective, because I do think he's a wonderful player. I'd be elated a 10 out of 10 to be able to play with a guy like that, who I think would be able to elevate our team to another level from a overall perspective for his career in the national team. I think it's like a two or a three Gordo's right. Unfortunately, it would not be what he needs to push him to a better level. And the only reason I don't give it a one, I give it like a, I'll give it a three is because he'll play, he'll get minutes. He, he would play and he would gain confidence and he would score goals and get assists. And yeah, is he playing at the same level as he would be at a Dortmund or something like, no, but he's not playing at Dortmund that's and he's not point. playing okay. at Nottingham that's, forest. And he's and not playing literally anywhere. Right. He goes right that's now. why I think it would be better than him not playing at all, but yeah. you cannot convince me that there is not a decent team in Germany or Spain that would take this kid and say, yes, you will get minutes for us. Why, I just don't believe that. So why do you I guys think, think that I, he's I, not I, getting minutes? I'm sorry, Dax. Why do you guys think that he's not getting minutes? I think he's, think I think he's, he's so an, talented I think, because I he's, he's not mature. He's an immature kid and he needs to grow up a little bit. And I think the world cup situation probably expedited that. And everything I've heard since then is like, yeah, he's been, he's been a good teammate. He's matured a little bit. He's grown up a little bit off the field. I read an article that I don't know if he's in, he's got a girlfriend or maybe he's engaged. I think he's engaged. Yeah, maybe he got maybe he got a dog. I don't know. You know, more responsibility. <laughs> more, more responsibility. But I, what I kind of dog? Article. What kind of dog would would Gio get? Gold uh, a, a golden doodle, hundred percent. A golden doodle, yes, uh, for sure. But anyways, my point is this: I think a Doberman Pinscher. I would love to play with a guy like that. Do I think with it's a long neck? No. <laughs> Do I think it would be great for his career? If he's not going to play anywhere in Europe, yeah, I think he needs to play. But I do think there are places in Europe that would be a better fit for him and still be a higher level. Than what him. about the old school model? What about the old school model of uh, of Landon Donovan that or um, or David Beckham, where they spent the you know the bulk of their year in Major League Soccer and then they'd go on a three or four month loan to wherever they went, Everton or, or Chelsea young. or too, AC he's, Milan. He's, he's too young. He's why. Too- because I think too, he, too young to just be able to like comprehend the switch there. I think if he stays in Europe, it will and him going through a difficult moment and coming through on the other side. I think it will harden him. I think it will give him a better experience rather than coming back to a lower level just to get minutes. And I the difference. The, I, but isn't that it, kind of the way that it works with players, Dax? I mean, I, I hear everything you're saying from a logic standpoint. It, it does make sense. But I also think that he took if he came out he and he t- said, if he came out and he said, I'm homesick like Landon, I would be like, come back. Sure. Fine. He, he, Landon was homesick. Yeah, but he that doesn't was the only have, reason Landon came back. He wanted to chill he doesn't have, the beach. He does not have yeah. the luxury Landon nor David had. Okay. They could 
David could pick whatever team he wa- he wanted, and he did. AC Milan, uh, PSG, whatever. The top teams are all going to take him. Right. Landon had enough clout at the time he started to do that, which wasn't l- later, that he could go to an Everton and almost be guaranteed minutes. But, I mean, Gio is not going to have that luxury. He's not going to be able to go to Atlanta and just be like, okay, I'll just now go. Now it's time for me to go on loan. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's on time. It, but, like, to where? He'll, and, he'll be end up and, on and, some and what's the what's the upside for Atlanta? Yeah. Yeah. And the upside for the upside for Atlanta is you're putting him back in the shop window in Europe somewhere where he's going to get games and get minutes. It doesn't have to be AC Milan. But to your point, Dax, like of a team in Germany or a team in England where he can go and get games and get minutes. I think that there are plenty out there, especially if he comes to Atlanta and produces. I'm on the other side of the fence here, guys. I I would I'd love to see it. And I think that your representation, as in Geo's representation and Garth or Carlos or whoever, they have to think about, okay, what does the next two years look like to put them back in to Europe again? Buy low, sell high. Dude, bring them back in, get them games, get them minutes, make them the man again. Find the rhythm that he was in before he went through the catastrophic emotional tornado that happened at the World Cup that happened, to be fair, to a 19-year-old, right? Like to a kid in so many different ways that was isolated because of a lot of variables that were his own doing, but also his parents doing. And listen, the, the sh- you're right. The shitstorm that is there. There's something to be said for consistent minutes, mm-hmm. regardless of the level. And look, MLS is much better than it was, right? It's it's a dude. Good, we've gone back a good and forth level over it's, this, right? It's not Europe. It's and so if he's going to not play in Europe and bounce around to team after team and go on loan after loan, yes, is it better for him to come to MLS and have responsibility? and stability oh. and have a lot on his shoulders in MLS. I think it is better, Dan. You're right. Oh, no, no, no. Hey. Let's just bring him in no matter how many minutes he's getting. He's G.O. Reyna. Remember? <laughs> Remember Dax? Remember Garth? No. Hey. We'll just bring him in. Anybody but him. No, I'm, I'm pretty we'll sure what Dax, and I, Dax and I both said that he wow. has to be great wow. for us to be great because he is wow. the difference maker on our team. And if he was to be getting games, Gordo's being I think very both, disingenuous. Dude, I, know I love, I love I'm, picking how, up, I'm picking up on him, what he's putting down here. It, it, when you're wrong, but you're always the first to raise your hand when you're right. Okay. I was the one to say, we need to get this guy minutes. And you guys, said, no, uh-uh. <laughs> so good. He's so What a good. novel concept. Know. Good Gordo. player needs minutes to be better. You're but if you guys Gordo. said no. <laughs> no. Uh, so, so, question. I'm the question saying, was, I'm should saying, we call him in or not? Dude, I'm yeah. pouring gasoline on the Geo to Atlanta fire. I would love to see it. Isn't that I really the front the, page of MLSsoccer.com? I think it would be the best thing for all parties involved. I would, I would, I'm, I'm on. I'm. How did that? I'm how did that do for Michael Bradley's career when they brought all the all the national team? Guys how did back? it do? How did it do for the last how did five? Do? How did it do for the last five World Cups when we had MLS players that were playing consistent minutes and showed some grit and determination in a game in our World Cup in our for our national team? How'd that do for us, Gordo? Pretty yeah. good. Pretty good. Thanks, Bub. Yeah, pretty Thanks, good. Bub. <laughs> All right. So are there any other players? I also wanted to ask this. There was obviously the, you know, the 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 rumors that were going around about Weston McKinney potentially coming back to the league. We've talked about FC Cincinnati still needing a striker, now potentially needing a center back because of Miazga's injury. <clears throat> Are there any other players that you could see ending up in MLS in this window from our team? Yeah, Tim Ream. Tim Ream. Yep. Where's he going? I think Cincinnati would be brilliant for Tim. I don't know if they can afford it, but uh, Charlotte. I think Charlotte is the is the latest on the hot stove. Which mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know about that move for Charlotte. I really like Charlotte's two young center backs. So they just beat Cincinnati in Cincinnati, right? I think I think Dean Smith is doing wonderful things with that team. Um, and they just they they just re-signed both their center backs, both relatively young kids to new deals. So I think if you bring in a, a Tim Ream, then you signal, you know, either you're going to three in the back or, you know, he's a rotational piece. I don't know. But a guy like Tim, got, he's going to command he's going to command decent money. I don't think he would be a DP, but he would be a TAM player and you're, you're not going to bring a guy like Tim back to sit on the bench. So I wonder if New York still has his rights, the Red Bulls. Didn't he play? Didn't no, he, they sold he a him. Red Bull guy? 
He yeah. did. Sold him. They sold him though. Yeah. All right. I think you keep rights. I think if you you keep a player's rights if he leaves. Don't off. you oh, keep okay. his discovery rights? No. No, I think if you sell a player, then it's whatever. I don't know. Cincinnati yeah. also also in need of a number nine. They sold their last U.S. international Brandon Vasquez to where Monterey, right? Still haven't found that guy. Uh, I could I could think of a couple names that that might fit in there, and, and then Atlanta, dude. That number that 50 I read, million? fifty million. That's a lot and, of money to spend. That's a lot of cheddar. Intend to, they intend to spend it this this I, window. I, I don't know if it's you know. I, I think that they'll intend to spend it however they see fit with whatever comes available. I mean, uh, you know, he Garth was saying that they're in the uh, they they're in the persuasion phase, which means that. You're dealing with guys that might take a little, might take a little uh, arm twisting to get to your club to see the vision, but that's that's usually not uh, not a slouch coming over in in, uh, Dax, in that capacity. Dax, did you steal the number ten Almadas? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> a mid-season number change for Dax McCarty? <laughs> I, absolutely, I absolutely should. Uh, uh well. Talking about uh, players that are going to be making potential debuts in Major League Soccer, Kevin Sullivan on the bench for the Philadelphia Union tomorrow night, 14-year-old, youngest player since Freddie Adu to, to make an appearance. He's already scored, I think, two or three goals for their next pro squad, and they're pulling him up. Makes sense, right? I mean, yeah. give I the mean, kid minutes, get him games. Eh, this is just to break the record. Come on, Jim. I see right through it. Jim said it, it's, it's just thousand percent, one hundred percent. I mean, I, Jim said he's earned it, and whatever, maybe he has. He scored a couple goals in MLS Next Pro, but what is he? He's played in how many five, six games? I mean, come on, it's to break the record, and that's fine. They want him to break the this, record. Good for this him. This is the old. This is the old hidden rabbit trick, dude. Yeah, it is. We oh, see right old, through you, Jim. We see right nah, through you. Jim. It's the old hidden. You want him to break the record? Look at our <laughs> record over here. Look at our record. Oh, he earned it. Here's Sullivan. Here's Sullivan. <laughs> Look at what we're doing. We're build. We're building the youth system. Save Watch it. Floor, Jim's buddy. gonna. Jim's gonna give him. Jim's gonna give him his debut. He's gonna break the record, and then he's gonna be with the next pro team the rest of the year. <laughs> for sure. For sure. That's my prophecy. I don't know, man. I could see this kid scoring a goal in his debut and staying with the team for the rest of the season too. Where there's he's he's scored it at every level he's played in. It it, it would not shock me, uh, but. There's a lot to be done. That's for that's for damn sure. Another, I think, last one that I wanted to touch on in um, in connecting all of these dots, man. Another one. Tim Howard joins Houston from an ownership standpoint. So he was with uh, Memphis nine hundred one, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I'm assuming that you can hold ownership in in both leagues. So he's probably he doesn't. Little... He's he's out. Did he he's get rid of it? For, he got rid of it. He got rid of it. He, he what do you make? What do you make? Early. What do you make of this move, Gordo? I don't know what to make of it, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't know what the attract. I'm not going to pretend to know what the attraction is uh, to Houston. I know Memphis. I know he was from there. He was probably probably about- the only ownership stake he could afford. <laughs> probably, probably, you know. But you know, he wants to be involved. You know, he built Memphis. He did a great job there. Got the got soccer, um, you know, and its roots, its grassroots up, and I think he's just looking to move up. So I don't know exactly how significant it is. I think it's just a another uh, rich athlete getting into ownership, you know, and, and good for him. <laughs> um, you know, everybody's doing it. Get, hey, buy a share and and uh, what are, know, what are they it, going for these days? Can I put like a hundred bucks in? Is that is that possible? Uh, <laughs> do they, do no, they have shares over a hundred? Probably could. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think I mean, this is, I, I, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's great for Tim. It's, I think just an equity play, right? Like here, right. Let, me, let me sprinkle a little bit of my money into this ownership group and watch it grow. And I think it's more beneficial for Houston, to be honest. I mean, it's good publicity. Uh, you get a guy with expertise at every single level of the game to, to come into your ownership group where, you know, I don't know that much about Houston's ownership group, but um Look, I think they've got a pretty bright technical staff led by Pat Onstead, right? Like, yeah. you'd have to assume that you know they'll they'll go to Tim for for you know little tidbits here and there. But do you think I, that I mean that's got to be more of like player recruitment 
like his Actually, relationships with you I think know he's with got teams great relationships and probably still executives over. in yep. in England probably isn't Oscar Dale is Oscar Dale Hoya still involved there or with Houston no idea maybe I don't know I think it's I a, think there's, there's a new a, ownership group right Ted Siegel came in and bought him. That sounds that, that sounds correct. Uh, do you find it odd? Do you find it odd that he didn't play that he played with the Rapids and New York and then ultimately end up buying into Houston? No, I think That's it's all I'm about saying. opportunity. I don't, it's all about I don't opportunity. Think, for sure. I, I, it's I, all I about it's all about opportunity and connections, right? Like maybe he has a connection to someone in Houston and they said, listen, there's an opportunity here. They'd love to have you if you want to throw down a couple of those Manchester United millions. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. But it has not. nothing to do. It and let's be honest, Tim's Tim's doing probably doing very well with NBC Sports and and his role. He's I think he's transitioned. He's been I think an athlete that has transitioned extremely well from the playing side to the other side, right? And look, he has he has the name brand. Like mm-hmm. whether we want to admit it or not, a guy with his beard brand, beard brand, beard brand, teeth brand, <laughs> name brand, his teeth are beautiful. Those chompers are made for TV, but look, oh my gosh, he, he is fantastic. Yeah, he's, I think he's, Tim is a smart guy. He's very business savvy. So, you know, whatever connection he had to Houston, I mean, he absolutely played that card. And I think it'll, it, it'll probably turn out for him pretty well in the long run. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Dax, close us out, man. We've been on this thing long enough. Uh, shout out to Steve Birnbaum. DC United legend um, just announced his retirement today. Uh, I never played with Steve in DC, uh, but he's a great dude and uh, I've had some good battles with him. I think injuries, unfortunately, got the better of him at the end. Um, but listen, uh, a one club guy, not absolutely not part of our club. Absolutely no. not. Human. No, so we not don't accept. It. We don't accept his kind here, uh, but you know we'll ask him to be on the pod. Maybe he'll come on. But uh, Steve, shout out to you, man! Congrats on a great career. Gordo, most memorable Steve Birnbaum moment. Hey, I uh, I roomed with him in one of my uh, my I think my second national team camp. Um, he was on the phone with his agent, and he was going to make a lot more money than I was going to be making. So. <laughs> Uh, hey, congrats to you, Steve Birnbaum. Great, great guy. Um, yeah, man, come on the wow. come on the pod. Good luck in the real. Good luck in real life, buddy. <laughs> there you go. Good life. Good luck in real life. Professional. Uh, you could have written that in a Hallmark card, Gordo. You are a wordsmith, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you out there. <laughs>